Welcome to Infused Eats, the cannabis-infused cooking show. This is Matt, your cannabis-infused host, and today we're making cannabis kokoda, which is marijuana-infused Fiji Island ceviche. For all the ingredients today's recipe, please visit infuseeats.com. It's 100% free and it has dozens of cannabis-infused recipes. And it'll have all the ingredients for today's recipe. We'll go through them one at a time in the recipe, but you can find the written list on that website. First, let's talk a little bit about the fish. The fish that we're using today is halibut. You need about a pound for the recipe that we're doing. You can use any kind of Pacific white fish. You could use grouper, you could use mahi-mahi, sea bass, any kind of white flesh fish. As far as the cannabis goes, you need one eighth to one quarter of cannabis. We're using some flour and some shake. You're also gonna need coconut oil and coconut milk. We're doing a double infusion today. So we're doing a little bit of an experiment today. The first step though, as always, is gonna to be to grind the cannabis. What we're doing now is we're activating the THC in the cannabis. When cannabis is on the plant, naturally it has THC, but it's the THCA, which is THC acid, which is the not, it's the not psychoactive type. So we want it to be psychoactive. So we're going to convert that to THC by heating it at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 minutes. So put that in an oven safe bowl, put a lid on it if you want to hold down the smell, and put that in the oven. Okay, once your cannabis has been activated, converting it to THC, we're going to go ahead and do the infusion process. I'd recommend for this recipe today to do the complete infusion process all the way to the point where we put it in the refrigerator and then begin the rest of the recipe. So put your infused or your activated cannabis into the bottom of your double boiler setup. We've got a saucepan with a little bit of water in it and then a Pyrex bowl sitting in it to make a double boiler. And now I'm adding in one cup of coconut milk. You can find coconut milk at grocery stores. Sometimes it might be on the ethnic aisle. And then we're also using some coconut oil. I'm using about two tablespoons of coconut oil. And we're gonna let this infuse in that double boiler over low heat, just barely boiling the water for one to two hours. And we're infusing both the oil and the milk at the same time here. And then a little bit later, we're gonna separate these back out. So this is, like I said, a little bit of an experimental recipe. I haven't done an infusion like this. So we'll see how it turns out in the end. But we're gonna let that keep stirring. You can put a lid on it if you want, but I usually don't like to put a lid because the condensation will drop water down into it and I don't really want that. So I didn't put a lid on it because I don't have to really worry about the smell where I'm at here in California. But once you're infused for one to two hours, you're gonna go ahead and strain that cannabis through some kind of fine mesh strainer. I'm using a metal filter. You could also use cheesecloth. Okay, so here's the point where we put that in the refrigerator to separate it. So we're gonna put that in the refrigerator for at least one hour. And during that hour, we can go ahead and move on with the rest of the recipe. The first step though is gonna to be to cook our fish. And this is a ceviche type recipe. This is actually from the Fiji Islands this Kokoda recipe, so it's sort of more of, a, of an island Fiji. But much like ceviche, it uses lime or lemon juice, the citric acid in that, to cook the fish. So in order to make that uh, work properly, you need to cook or cut the fish into small cubes, about half inch cubes, very evenly. If you have a big blood vein in your uh, fish too, you'll wanna cut that out. I didn't have much of a vein to cut out though, but cut off all the fat and make sure you cut your fleshy part of your fish into half inch cubes. All right, for this part of the recipe, which for cooking, you can either use lemon or lime or a combination of both, which is what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze out and filter out the seeds and need about a cup. And you could probably get by with a little bit of less, uh, but we're also gonna reserve back two or three tablespoons of the lemon juice here. And you wanna just completely cover your fish, but just barely. And we'll put that, you can see it's already starting to cook the fish. And we're gonna go ahead and cover that, put it in the refrigerator, and we're gonna let that marinate and cook for at least 20 to 30 minutes. So we have plenty of time now to go ahead and continue on prepping the rest of our ingredients while that fish marinates and we're still infusing our cannabis. So what I've taken now is a couple of dried peppers. You can use whatever kind of chilies you want. And I've put them in a mortar and pestle and I've squeezed about a quarter of a lemon or a quarter of a lime on top of it. And then I'm gonna grind that into a paste. And I'm rehydrating those peppers and bringing out the flavors and we're gonna put that in a little bowl and set that aside. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and continue prepping the rest of our fruits and vegetables. And there's quite a few of them. But the main thing about all of these, and you can use a different combination of fruits and vegetables if you want, 
Uh, there is no strict rule about what the ingredients are for this recipe. But the main thing is to cut them into very small cubes and as close to even size between all the vegetables as you can. So I've cut these uh, stalks of celery, I've taken a couple of ribs and I've cut them lengthwise into small pieces and I'm turning them over and then chopping them the rest of the way so that they're nice, tiny little cubes, a quarter to a half inch. And that's gonna be the way we go with the rest of the ingredients here. I'm doing a cucumber the same way, I've got a red onion that I'm gonna do the same way, or about half of it. And then also I'm going to do tomatoes. And one thing to note about the tomatoes is that you want to take the seeds out because if you don't, it's going to kind of color and muddle up your ceviche or your uh, Dakota. So go ahead and separate the seeds out when you do the slicing here. But again, put them into small little pieces just like the uh, same size as the other stuff. Okay, next up we're going to the pineapple. For this recipe, I'm using pineapple and mango. Uh, you could omit one or the other or you could substitute other things out but I think that's a pretty good combination for this. It's very island-like with the pineapple and mango. And we have a lot of coconut flavor too. So again, I'm taking off all the, you know, all the, all the hard pieces of the coconut and getting down to the flesh. And again, dicing it into the small quarter to half inch pieces. And then also uh, I have some mango already sliced up. It's fresh mango, but I'm gonna go ahead and chop that up and put it in there too. And then now we have our cilantro going. We're gonna dice up some cilantro. Okay, now we've come to our carrot. For the carrot, we're gonna do it different than the other things because the carrot's gonna be a garnish on top. Now, if you don't wanna do it as a garnish on top, you could go ahead and chop it into a little quarter to half inch cubes just like the rest of the stuff. But I'm gonna be a little fancy with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a way to cut it into thin strips. Now, if I had like a, a slicer or a shredder where I could shred it, I would do that, but I don't. So I'm gonna have to do it by hand. And it took a little while to do it, but in the end, I was glad I did because it made a really nice garnish in the end. So you could do your carrots like this if you want. You could do it different. You could garnish with something else if you want to. But I do recommend this. And once I had them all sliced up thin, I put it in, a, in some cold water to keep them fresh and to make them curl up a little bit and be nice and crisp. But you could also pickle them. You could put them in some cold vinegar and do the same thing and uh, pickle them up if you want. But for me, I'm just using water this time. I want to keep that fresh, uh, sweet taste of the carrots. Okay, so we've got all our other ingredients prepped. Now we're going back to our cannabis that has been chilling in the refrigerator for about an hour. So what has happened is completely separated out the infused coconut oil that was at the top and then the infused coconut milk is at the bottom. I lost a tiny bit of milk, so I'm going ahead and replace and make sure that I have a milk uh, at a cup there, the full cup again. And then with the cannabis that's cold, and you wanna work while this is still cold, uh, because it'll start melting at room temperature really easy. So the important part of this of this part of the recipe is to keep that coconut oil as cold as possible and work with it and only touch it with your hands as little as possible because your actual skin temperature will begin to melt it. So I'm gonna put that right back into the freezer or refrigerator while I assemble the rest of the ingredients. And you can see everything is ready now, prepped and ready to go. And that's the way you want it to be when you start to assemble this recipe. So, okay, so here we are, let's make our Kokoda now. You can see our fish is completely cooked now. It's all opaque and it's very tender and it really turned out great. I was really happy about the, the way the fish turned out. Okay, and the next step is just to go ahead and add in all the remaining ingredients, except for the carrots. And then uh, I also, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze in another lime in there just to keep all the ingredients uh, sort of colorful and bright. And then now I'm adding in the milk. That was the coconut milk that's infused that I just put in there. And then the, the cilantro and the peppers. But don't forget the cannabis. And this is sort of an experimental recipe for me here. I just thought that it would be really interesting to add this other texture of the, the coconut oil. And as long as you keep this recipe cold, which of course you're gonna do, it's gonna remain as cold as possible all the time without freezing it. So that coconut oil will just kind of almost disappear, but it's the tiniest little crumbs in there. So now you're gonna to gently toss that together. You don't wanna just mix the hell out of it. You wanna just kind of gently toss it and get it uh, incorporated together so you don't chop every mess everything up. And then it, after about two or three hours of marinating, you're ready to serve it. And you could let it go overnight if you want. It'll last for two or three days in the refrigerator. But this was one of the most refreshing and delicious and healthy recipes that I've ever made. I was really so happy with the way this turned out. 
I would highly recommend taking the time to do this when it's summertime. It's a great recipe to sit out on uh, for lunch and get your buzz on and begin your day. So make sure you check out infusedeats.com. You can get this recipe, dozens more. It's completely free. So please uh, check that out if you're 21 and up. And I really hope you enjoyed this recipe for cannabis-infused Kokoda. If you did, please hit that like button. And make sure you're subscribed to Roughhouse Studios for more cannabis culture videos made just for you. And also subscribe to Infused Eats for more infused recipes. And we're also doing our live stream on Infused Eats right now, so check that out. Okay, this is Matt, your cannabis-infused host, signing off. Thanks for watching.